Yeah, no, I, I have the same. So I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, and we do have some additions according to the select board memo. Review of errors and omissions, personnel matters, and ash tree management project. Are there any more additions? I don't know if it's possible to suggest um, a short discussion on speeding on County Road. County Road? Speeding on County Road, not the event of County Road. Oh. Okay. It's your prerogative to add anything to the agenda. Okay. Yeah. As but usually as if it's a long um, item that you add in, there's various penalties at a point. At what point do you reveal those penalties? That um, that's... Is that like Not to be of, spoken of in open of, session. Is that what the secret handshake that we haven't been told yet? <laughs> Wait, I think six months ago they tell us. Uh, review of minutes, July 24th. It's actually August 7th. It's August 7th? Yeah. Oh, it's a misprint. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> August 7th. Um. Good evening. We're, in, we're intentionally quiet here. It's like those PDF documents where you see this page is intentionally left blank. We're, we're doing some reading. So does anybody have any comments on the minutes? I'll make, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. I'll yeah. uh, Any further discussion about the minutes? No. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Ah. So, so, Gina, I'll I'll go ahead and make the changes and uh, send you the PDF. <coughs> Just Perfect. take out your draft. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. And do we have any public comment? I don't see. Any. I'm here to talk about the town garage. Okay. The subtitles, the captions. Well, we have an item on the agenda for the town garage. Um, delinquent. I'm, what's that? I'm just uh, here uh, later when you can see the fiber uh, discussion. If there's any questions on that, and also to hear about uh, Sanders Circle and uh, what the repair plans are for our road and uh, plowing and so forth. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is a delinquent tax collector report. Okay. I think that's done from the town treasurer. I'll be brief. I no. gave you guys a list. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and after going through all the notes and talking with our attorney, I think the first step is we need to give him the list of the 10 people. Yep. And I think we should take all 10. Yes. I don't think there should be any deviant. No. Nope. Okay. Totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the first step. I'm going to give him the list. Once we get that going, he'll start. I, I kind of briefed you how it works, but he'll send out the letters. And usually people pay this first round. Well, they don't always. Well, he said generally most people will try to pay, yeah. So, but at least that'll get it going. Yeah. So that's, the, that's right. yeah. And right now and we're going to. Just to clarify, we're talking about 10 people who are more than one year delinquent. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a different definition of delinquent. I want to make it clear for everybody yeah. who's listening. Ooh. Well, the definition of delinquent is over one year in arrears and taxes, not not the six month payment. You go. So you miss the first payment, you're not delinquent. You go the second year, you don't pay it, then you become delinquent. Uh huh. You 
see what I mean? Not, not a full year. Not a grace so, period. So these, well, you are, could these, are, these are more than one year delinquent. These yes. are one, one year yeah. that they've not paid. So one more, day, more than one year. One one day, year. One so this is not May 16th. They're right, but this right, is right, right. May 16th the next year. Yeah. 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 Well, the town has always historically waited for at least two years before initiating right. the tax process. So right. that's why. Yeah. 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 So if it's, less, if it's less than one year, you would just consider late? So would that be more an accurate term? I think that if, if you pay all your taxes by the second payment, that's what is that considered? Yeah, they're late. Yeah. If you if you don't pay after the May payment, you're delinquent. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. You, could you theoretically do and then that? interest yes. accrues. Mm -hmm. Interest you could take action after one day. Yes. Theoretically. After one day after the one after yes. the end. Yeah. On the one year and one day. On the sixteenth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, but you could take action mm -hmm. one day if you're one day late theoretically. Yes. 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 Fine. I mean, a lot of places do do that. A lot of places do. Harvard does. I think. That's what you said We do before. two tax sales a year up there. Yeah. In the fall of each year, the delinquent tax collector sends a town's attorney a list of delinquent properties for tax sale. After receiving the list of delinquent properties from the DTC, the town attorney prepares a tax sale engagement letter. Uh, after 30 days, the DTC and attorneys will see who has paid and so on. We have a policy here, and it's not to go out after one day. We cannot theoretically go out okay. after one day because we've decided already to, to do something else. Very good. Thank you. But some generically you can. Right. 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 St right. State law allows you to do that. Yeah. But our policy is Yeah. Okay. okay. So is there anything more you want to? Well, the delinquency is down. I mean, if you saw the yeah, amount. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we got two estates that paid off this right. year. Which is good. Which is very good, yeah. Yay. So we're in a good spot, and yeah. I think I think the majority of these people will clear up yeah. before they go too far. Yeah. So that's There's my... There's some historic um, yeah. stop loss yeah. in there. But... Yeah. Some are, you know, been on there a long oh, time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, you know, hey, we'll try. So, Frequent flyers. Yeah. Frequent flyers. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So... Okay. Tax bills went out last week. They were mailed today, officially. Yeah. So they're gone, yeah. And the audit's pretty much done. So. Okay. <laughs> Exciting stuff. Anything else? Your, ta your tax season, right? <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> you can breathe again. I, I think one thing that you did mention, too, that we're better off than we were last year. Yes. You know, we've had in the past, we've had a very large property owner that was delinquent. And this year, that didn't occur, I guess. No. I don't know who so, you're talking about. You can tell me later. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't mention names. Yeah. Yeah. Did I? No. 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 Yeah, I just, I'm not sure. But I think she was asking. Like a whisper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no names for me. Anyway, that's fine. That you, you can you can talk about it if you wanted to. Yeah. Yes. It's exactly. not against the law at all, but your name will show up in the newspaper when you put it up for tax sale. Right. Yeah. So. But we we're sensitive to that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? So, no. I'm, that's anything. Have any questions for me? Anybody? Good job. No. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks for You're moving welcome. ahead. Really mm -hmm. appreciate that. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting yeah. there. One no. year down. So. All right. It's a process, and thank you. Yep. You're welcome. All right. I'm out of here. Okay. Bye. Okay. You don't want to hang around, huh? See you soon. It's interesting. I don't need to. It's be interesting. It's not going to be so boring as we thinking originally. No. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can also There's some red flags have come up. See, see you soon and let's uh, let's make some money. Yeah. 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 I'll get hold of them this week. I'm okay. Good. Okay, sounds good. All right, thank you guys. All right. Take yep. care. Bye. So the next item is consideration of justice of the peace campus. <clears throat> and there are some people that are interested. So I'm reading. And we've got Jimmy here. Was there anybody else? No. Two. Waterman. What's that? Two people. Oh, two. Oh, on the back. Yeah, Sorry. two. Oh, Janice Waterman. Yeah. How many do we need? One. One. Oh, just one. And they're both really good candidates. Yeah, so. both yeah. candidates go good. Yeah. 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 So, Rosie, are you on the meeting? Mm -hmm. You are. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, could you? Yeah. Hey. Um, could you walk us through the process that you <coughs> that we need to follow and that you used to? Getting us th thus far. Sure. Um, with an independent, when an independent JP resigns, there is no party to caucus to replace them. 
So according to the governor's office, we need to recruit candidates, approve the candidates through the select board, and then send all approved candidates to the governor's office for a selection for a final appointment. And that's only because they do not belong to a political party. Mm -hmm. oh. okay. who, who was it you talked to in the governor's office, just out of curiosity? Um, I believe her name is Stacy. She's in charge of all of the appointments. Okay. Or... okay. Tracy, possibly. I'm sorry? Tracy, possibly. Possibly. I don't have my email open in front of me. I'm sorry, Carl. Okay. So um so we would approve one of these candidates and then you would take it from there. Is that where I'm getting? No, you you will approve both names. Oh, okay. And the, and the governor's office decides which ones, which oh. one will be appointed. Um, it's really kind of, um, it's a strange situation because, again, there is no party who can handle this. So the governor's office says, just run it through your select board, have them approve the names in the event that someone, we get a candidate that's for some reason not appropriate. I guess you could screen them there. Oh. Um and so by approving both of the candidates, we would I would send them tomorrow to the governor's office and they would decide which one they wish to appoint. Okay, perfect. Sounds good to me. So we'll you know, make a motion to approve both candidates so for listed. Do we have a second? We have a second. Any the, further the discussion? Motion, the motion is to approve both candidates for the Justice of the Peace position to send them to, to the, the governor's to office the for uh, selection for of their, one of them for the appointment. For their, right. yeah. for their selection. That's what, that's what I thought. Is there further um, exactly. further yeah. discussion yeah. on this? This is the only thing is we talk about. Could you talk stop talking? Could you stop laughing? Um. <laughs> yes. <Whoops. laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Is there any further discussion about this? Can't. Not, not <laughs> you. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Um, Thank you. Thanks Thank you, Rosie. Rosie. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, East Montpelier Fire Department meeting update. Um, I attended. Zoe attended. It was a wonderful meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well run. Perfect. Not mediocre in any way. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, sort of I could say. <laughs> what sort of attendance was there from Dallas? Uh, they had three, three people. Okay. Yeah. How long was the meeting? Um, it was pretty long. It's over an hour. Yep. Hmm. Yep. And they're so, right on top of that, the that's finances. It, that's it, huh? <clears throat> that's it, huh? That's all I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep it vanilla. I, I read between, between lines very, very well. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> you have a lot of intuition. Okay. Any questions about the meeting? I okay, good. So. I don't think so. I, did, I read through all the financial reports. It's sure. Pretty well pretty well done. Perfect. I think. There was a number of mistakes. Yeah, but I just think they were, they were it was fairly clear and easy to read, though. Yeah. It was more, um, not necessarily mistakes as much as miscodings, that they were trying yeah. to get <clears throat> actual results aligned with the budget. So, yeah. um, well, I it did... looked like they spent over budget or they took in over budget, but there was some yeah. mis missteps in it. Mm -hmm. Paul sent a revised version, I think, with some of those reclassifications yeah. they mentioned this afternoon, yeah. but it was late to for this, so. Okay. So the next item is the town garage project update. So the first thing we got to consider is consideration of wetlands consultant to evaluate vacant parcel. Gina can update us on that. So Arrowwood Environmental, Dory Barton is who I've communicated with and Dory, just to let you, I don't know if John has any experience working with Dory, but Kathleen Gent, who's helping us with this RFP, has worked with Dory in the past mm -hmm. and has had very positive interactions with her. So Dory can do what she calls a preliminary walk around to essentially informally map the wetlands, essentially to get an idea of a buildable area. Because typically to do a wetlands delineation, she asked me, can you give me your site plan where this is going on the property? I said, that's the problem. We need to determine where we can actually put a building on this property. 
So this <clears throat> is a step one for her to evaluate the parcel, determine where the buildable areas are. This is a pretty minimal effort. She said estimate $800-ish um, for something like this because this is at a pretty high level. Next steps would be wetlands delineation when we determine where we would actually then want to put that building. And then that is when she would formally outline where the wetlands are on that property to get the necessary buffer we would need around the building. All that assumes that we have a positive first approach to this. Can I ask a question? Yes, you can. Um, I was wondering how well did, or how bad did, did that <coughs> particular piece of property behind the current town garage survive the flooding and high waters? I don't think there's any issues that I know of. Oh, I'm just thinking that if you're building a wetland, you know what? There's going to be water there. And yeah, but it doesn't <clears> even really appear to be a wetland. To, you know, if you yeah, I looked, at, I looked at the wetlands map. Yeah, it, it just I like, mean, I've been out there and go around and this and that. It yeah. doesn't appear to be a wetland. I just was wondering. But it's so. probably a wetland somewhere. I'm not really sure where. Maybe way it's back. Different levels of wetlands. It used to be a wetland like 20, 15 years ago. What was it? I think so. And there's two ponds on each side, too. It shows them anyway. So that's, that's why I asked that question. Just so there was no, flood, no flooding? In Not that I know of. No. I, I don't know. I haven't driven around there since, but it appears you to be high and road. dry when you drive around Well, not to the road, but this parcel, this is back yeah. beyond the road. So I don't know what the land is exactly doing. I think there. it's I don't further know that back anyone, where it tends if to be more wet. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know anyone can, that anyone can really say definitively what it There's stuff like stacked out there and culverts and this, that, and everything else. Yeah, right, it right, right behind small. there. We've been up there. Yeah, yeah, it, but further back. It's yes, pretty yeah, far right. back. But. Okay. Did yeah. you run past her the question about the recent Supreme Court ruling and how that affects the I did not. We, did, we did not get into that level of detail for okay. this for this purpose. Okay. No. It's an opportunity to do it on the walk around. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think we should proceed ahead with this, but um, it's a pretty minimal fee. We need to get information coming as quick as we can. Mm -hmm. And she's, and she's available. She can well, some. We're, it'd be the end of September, sometime in October. So this will, I don't know that we will have any additional steps taken on this, be able to, the, the season will end the beginning of November. So I don't know how far we're gonna get. That's part of the conversation we need to have about the town garage. Um, right. Well, the sooner we get her out there, the better. Mm -hmm. so that, that's the only way we're going to be able to move ahead so i think we should do it so do you want me to uh, do a motion do a motion to accept the uh do we need one i mean it's a you're gonna have to have a contract pretty minimal amount of money so well, we could we could make a motion to say we, we make a motion to hire just to make a motion to hire to or to accept the um the pricing structure that Arrowwood Environmental provided to the town and to um, authorize the town administrator to enter an agreement with Arrowwood Environmental. Second. Sounds good. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> you guys appear to have it, do have it. <coughs> All right. So, oh, um, on the town garage, wasn't Andy going to tune in on this? That, that's the next. Yeah. You have a few bullets for this. What's that? The energy There's committee There's a few next. bullets for this. The next one is the energy committee statement. Okay. I don't have that on my agenda. It's, no, it's just oh, on your memo. memo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're going to hear from Andy then. You ready? Yep. So <clears throat> we discussed this in the energy committee. You, di you did want an energy committee, right? <laughs> just <laughs> The Energy Committee would like to ensure that the current RFP process for the town garage does not end up yielding a structure that has low initial cost, but high long-term cost and high carbon emissions. The committee recommends that the town look at what other Vermont towns have done recently in their garage projects, um, in which uh, talking to Guthrie, he's done a little bit of that already, establish energy, functional and environmental goals and consider a design build process, in other words, hire an architect, as elements of the forthcoming RFP. So the carbon emissions, there's two pieces to that. One is, of course, energy that's spent in the building, and the other is the energy impact of the materials you choose to build it out of. 
So, for example, a Butler building that's all steel has very high carbon emissions right off the bat, whereas a wood building has much, much less. So um, that, that's what we'd like to suggest happen for here. Um, will it slow down your process? It, it, probably. Um, but it will end up with a building that I think we all would like to live with for the next, I don't know, it could be here for 100 years. Um, would you be willing to provide the select board with um, some pros and cons of going with metal and going and going with wood? The wood structure, I think, you we end up having to have had it sprinkled. Depends on the size of the building, anyway. If you have to have it sprinkled. Yeah, I guess we. Could, well, I mean, those are good points that we, we need to bring up as we move along. You would think that you you guys probably evaluated this sort of thing. You did talk about the carbon. Um, the, cost to the environment um, for metal and it's less for wood. What are some of the other pros, of pros of using wood? Um, more energy efficient because um, uh, steel is so conductive of heat, wood is not. See, it's, it's not a good insulator, but it's an insulator. Um, yeah, we built the, the fire stations a wood building um, and it's uh, quite durable and, and efficient. I think uh, just to editorialize a little bit, I think the design of the fire station kind of got away from us. Um, it's hard sometimes with architects to remember who's working for who. And um, so it's important, um, you know, I pushed for a much simpler design, but I lost that battle. Um, but we did get an efficient building out of it nonetheless. <clears throat> and these buildings where you bring in many, many tons of very cold steel covered with ice and water in the winter, have huge energy loads when you bring these buildings in. And so um, we want to be cognizant of that and um, uh, make sure we've got a building that's going to be efficient and use the least energy possible. I think you're referring to the vehicles being brought into the building? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. OK. How, are you, how do you mitigate that? The wood's not going to help that too much. No, it's what you make that heat with is the question. Um, and heat pumps aren't up to the task. It, you're, you need well over 100,000, sometimes 200,000 BTUs an hour to warm the place up readily. And radiant floor, like they've got in half the garage right now, um, is really helpful in terms of drying things out. Uh, and that's hard to do with heat pumps unless you go with a ground source heat pump. Um, but um, those are expensive, but right now the feds are paying like 40% of the cost on the ground source heat pumps. So um, it's worth looking into. I think by doing a design process, you give yourself time to look at all of these options and figure out what you want to do. Typically, what we start with is a conversation with you all, with Guthrie. And um, uh, I, I guess I should, I should introduce the fact that I've, I've been a, a high performance building design consultant for about 30 years. Um, so the, I've been saying 30 for a while now, though. Uh, <laughs> um, and what we typically do is start start with your goals. What is it you want to accomplish in this building? Obviously, there's all the the programmatic needs that, and and Guthrie ran me through some of those when it, when I went and looked at the building. Um, and it's pretty clear he needs some more space in there, among other things. And um, uh, so the, the along with the programmatic, what's the environmental program that you want to have happen here? In terms of your material selection, the embodied carbon, the energy consumption, air quality, and so on. The mechanical systems in the fire department were done as a design build, and the ventilation system they put in was totally inadequate to handle the moisture load that's represented when you melt all that ice off of the trucks when they come in. Um, so that's an example of why you want these things designed instead of uh, going to a design build situation. Okay. So it sounds like um, as we move on the process, we're, we'll be consulting uh, the Energy Committee. Or you can also, involved. when you they'll do be involved with do your RFP for, for, for engineers or slash architects, you can just put some of that information in there yeah. as a need. Right. See, we were thinking of design build as one entity. Well, sometimes they do that. I mean, the Central Vermont Solid Waste District they ha actually one engineering company um, 
just matched up with an architectural company and they submitted a, 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 a proposal together. Mm -hmm. So essentially it's design build because they're right. both in on that together. Yeah. So. So what makes sense in terms of integrating this advice into our process? Would it be helpful to ask Kathleen to be in touch with Andy, for example? I think that's not really the scope that we had discussed with Kathleen. It right. was a different, that now we're getting into exactly what I originally brought to go and get, was to somebody to actually scope this out fully for an RFP. We decided to go a simpler route. Okay. This is now getting into the complicated side that that yeah. what I brought initially so we, as a do request. So we need to make so, a decision as to whether we want to reverse our previous? Uh, th that's what I'm coming to you all tonight, because yeah. this, is, be, this could quickly become <clears throat> my job <laughs> which i don't have time for right now so if july 10th hadn't happened things would be a little bit better i don't think kathleen could I, handle I, that she possibly could but we need to define who's involved i think we need to define the stakeholders that are involved that can have direct communication yeah and I, that's one of the pieces I wanted to discuss with you all. In my previous history, while well, I know that was with corporations, but you have a project team, put it in a town term, perhaps a committee, mm -hmm. that is responsible, that's all the stakeholders that are involved, that are going to be providing feedback, that are going to be providing information, that are working together on this. And you would have a project manager overseeing all of this. We don't have that. Andy, would you be willing to describe for us uh, how the process worked with the fire station? Um, we're going back a little ways. So I, uh, um, any memory lapses I hope will be forgiven here. But yeah, there was a process to go out and select an architect. Um, there was a team that, that was mostly the fire department, which um, I was on that committee with them. And an architect was selected and we worked with them on the design and reviewed the design. So the fire department provided the committee. So you need, you need an owner's committee and um, uh, oftentimes entities such as towns will hire an owner's rep for these kind of projects. Somebody that knows the construction world, um, you're really playing in somebody else's ball field otherwise. Um, but that doesn't always happen. It didn't happen for the, for the fire department, I don't believe. And uh, Scott and partners were the architects, um, and um, then they finished the design, and then it went out to bid. They had all the engineers on board they needed, although they didn't. They didn't do, you know, they were able to give you a lower cost or give the fire department a lower cost for the design because they didn't include the engineering for the mechanicals, um, and. You either pay the engineer or you pay the contractor to have their engineer do it. It's not like the engineering doesn't get done. It's just which pot of money it comes out of, design or construction. And when it comes out of design, then you have some control over the process because you can review these things as they go along. Um, in theory, you can you can um, review that with a design build, but in my experience, you don't get very far. Um, and um, it doesn't work all that well. They, they pretty much want to do what they're used to doing, the, the contractor, as opposed to what you may want to get a good building. And I will tell you, I have some experience in my construction background. I mean, my wife's company right now is doing a design build with a firm that builds apartments. So it does happen that you do that. Oh, yeah, it happens a lot. Yeah. It's actually saved her company quite a bit of money going that way. Right. Design so, that's, the, that's the reason the salt waste issue went with the combination architect and engineer because it was significantly less less money yeah. than going with two separate entities exactly. and paying full both for both. Uh, I get <clears throat> one challenge and one concern that we have right now, it's and even Kathleen has said this to me, mm -hmm. what we're putting together is rather generic. That's very difficult when you take that out to an RFP to get any clarity on exactly what your costs are going to be. If we are yeah. not very clearly spelling out what we're looking for, it's hard to get good numbers. So mm. it could end up costing more in the end of the day. So it's, I want to mention this because I don't think we have a very well defined process right now for moving forward with this. I think we need to do that. I also think we need to be practical on the time frame that this is going to take and in considering this the primary use of future ARPA funds. 
we we have to have funds committed by the end of 24. So, you know, here we are almost the end of August trying to get just a wetlands. We don't even know what buildable area we have on that property right now. This project, I don't know what will be happening with it a few months from now. So, but the key for me is I think we need to define who's involved with this because one comment in this energy <coughs> committee statement is that the town consider or look at what other Vermont towns have done. If someone would like to step up and do that, please, I welcome them. But the town staff, I we don't have capacity. I don't have capacity to do that right now. So. Okay. I mean, I know of some town garages are being built by a local company. I did reach out to Cabot. That was the one we toured. Yeah. Cabot, of course, just like everyone, is dealing with post flood and could not get me information right now. They had to pack everything up in their office, and they're still in the midst of trying oh, yeah. to put themselves back together. So. Yeah. I can get a list of the projects that have just been built and are going and are being built. There are some projects that are being built. Right. I now. think there's some but state garages being built too. Yeah. But there's town garages. But right. again, the purpose and help of a committee or some kind of assigned group is that that group can reach out to these okay. towns to get yeah. the information. We just dissolved our town garage committee. But maybe well, but that committee would have been me doing all of that. That's yeah. my point. I'm trying okay. to get this yeah. outside of my office. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, so. I know the, the solid waste district has actually two, two specialists that are over, overseeing um, the design of that facility it just happened to be they just they hired those two i, I kind of question why they need two um but yeah they, so they do have something to just have as a side part of someone's job right this is a pretty big project and mm -hmm. that's what kathleen and i have discussed over and over again and she's like this is a big project and it's going to be more expensive it's not like building a pole barn be. it we don't have at waitsfields you had commented on waitsfields rfp i yeah, read yeah, that right. it's very generic waitsfield is building their building on their current site where their current building is we don't know okay. where our septic is. We don't know what the wetlands implications are. We have a yeah. stream behind our building. We have it's it's not the same. Ours okay. is a lot more complicated. All right. So, what do you? All right. So we're saying that Kathleen Jen does not have clarity well, what she's going to be putting out. We know, need before. to figure out I, I would need to talk to her about again we were we kind of hired her at a high level we're, we're changing if we want to dig into this a lot further then we're changing what we hired her to the do. scope is changing correct mm -hmm. Do, you said there was formerly there was a garage committee yes so many it was right? me Guthrie and it John. Is, it, is there an expertise was that, is there expertise in the community that engineers, whatever, that, that might want to help us out with this? Or just some varied? Well, I, I think we got to decide. Or is that, or is that this? Then, then we're putting more layers and OK. All right. So ideally, to me, you would hire someone. You would hire a project okay, manager, good. consultant, whatever type of whatever Central Vermont Solid Waste did. It's that's. They're building a specific facility. The household has this waste reception yeah. area, well, so they awesome. needed so they needed somebody with that expertise. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we need, as a town, to say what it is that we want. And That's the big one. We have not clearly said whether we want a generic metal building or a more efficient wood building, and looked at how much we're willing to pay for the more efficient building. So we we have some decisions that we can't waste on to someone we hire to be project manager right. to make ourselves. Yeah, well, the yeah, I project think manager is someone who would bring, you ask the questions and the project manager would bring you the data to make the question, to answer, for you to be able to choose. Right, like maybe someone that could say whether it was possible to create a building in the map, the time frame that we have to incorporate the ARPA funding in the limited time frame. Because if that was possible, it makes sense to maybe spend more money now and then not have to pay so much for energy costs later, especially since ARPA funding would be available. Well, I mean, but to answer that question, when it sounds like you might so, be So you get the engineering aspects of this and you have the architectural aspects of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the same thing that this All Waste District is doing. They're, they're actually looking at the, 
the site now to see, you know, uh, what the stormwater considerations are, um, if, to see if it's a brownfield, to see if they have some issues with hazardous materials that might be in the ground already because it was sited at one time because of an oil leak. So th that's, and actually, so we went out with a RFP for engineering and architectural. We went out for two and took one. Why couldn't we do the same thing? Those engineers are going to do the same thing. They're going to do the engineering part of it, which would be wastewater, siting, all that stuff. And then the architect's going to do everything else. For, uh, the energy committee might want what we want and what, what Guthrie needs to have for programming. That would all be in there. So why couldn't you just go out for, for and just go out for engineering and for architectural services and say, we'll also entertain um, a, a, a response uh, requests are not a request, but um, a response to our proposals or our requests um, from a consolidated group of an, en an engineer and an architect. Would that be design build? No, no. no just, they're not just, just no. the engineer and architect. Right. Then you can hire your construction company if you want to do that. But yeah, I mean, this, if, it, since we have it, since we have such a complicated, more right. complicated building, it might make sense to go out for both an engineer and an architect. They can sit down and say, you know, you, and then we'll pick somebody who's built a town garage before. We'll pick somebody who's, who's dealt with wetlands and dealt, dealt with wet sites and this sort of thing. And then we'll say, okay, give us an idea. You know, this is what Guthrie needs. This is what we generally want. This is what the, what the uh, energy committee wants. Why don't you give us a little bit of an idea of what you would consider building? And then they might show you a bunch of, well, they will. They'll show you a bunch of ones that they were involved in. And, right. And then you can pick and choose what you want. So does it make sense to do the RFP right now for that type of service rather than go with the wetlands? Thing? No, I think the wetlands person is going to give us the data that we need. I think so. But, but I do think that why waste your time and, and, and what's, why fiddle around? Let's just send out an RFP. If we don't like them, we don't have to accept any of them. Right. I agree. Right, and so. then she's already written two RFPs. Oh, yeah. She's, we're in the process. She's just trying to get a more clearly defined scope. And I think that we shouldn't be a will end up going generic. Yeah. And it's it will well, be figured out by the engineer and architect. Well, the folks well, are not going to apply if they've never built a town garage. And if they right. do apply and they do say, yeah, we, <laughs> we've never built one, but we'd like to try, we probably won't take them. Right. Yeah. And you um, take some of those experience. Right. And we're going to be concerned about <laughs> cost, but cost won't be the primary thing no, because never. because sometimes if you go with a low bidder, you might not, you might go with a person with the least amount of experience. And then yeah. we look into their background and, and say, well, okay, we're going to choose these guys. And we'll have a meeting and we'll. Do it. So yeah. who's, uh, I, I like all that, and I'm left wondering still who's the we in all this? Who's going to be the people representing the town of East Montpelier? That was going to be my next question. Right. question. So when this person's hired, who are they reporting to? Right. Awesome. Well, I'm not so Some much. Some that knows more than me. About. No. They can report to us. Why not? Yeah, they're going to be just like talking with the sheriff's department. They're going to have a contract and an agreement eventually, and they're going to come in here and they're going to. Give us a proposal, or not a proposal so much, but a, an idea of what their designs would look like, and then we can tailor them if we want to. Well, I, I think it's a level of detail beyond what we're accustomed to doing at the select board level. So it's not a it's not a detail that I'm not accustomed to doing. I do with that stuff every single day. So you should be on the committee. But I'm, I'm fine with that, but I think the select board will make some final decisions oh, about I think the it design. Will too. But I, I as think, far as the I building think goes, on a day-to-day -day basis, there needs to be. Well, some some group of people that can interact with the folks that we hire who are empowered to ask some questions, mm -hmm. get, get feedback, yeah. and prepare something to present to the select board as a whole. Right. But and for not initially, though. Initially, we can make the decision to hire who we want to hire. The well, design, the, that's the after we engineer. hire the architect engineer, right. correct? Right. Yes. Yes. The yes. RFP, you all, I think, of we course, can, can you know make the decision yeah. on who we hire. I'm more concerned about what Carl's discussing right now, Further. which is after that person's hired, yeah. what is that process yeah. to the, the design that building yeah. now? Yeah. Right. We can't- In my experience, if you, um, a relatively small committee is helpful. Someone from the select board, Guthrie, and maybe somebody from the energy committee, and that would be a, a, a good tight committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's not a That's big committee. Cool. This is you want as few people mm -hmm. and you should have your defined hats on in mm -hmm. this in this yeah. process. Mm -hmm. Okay, so initially though, we've already hired somebody to do the wetlands delineation. The second thing that we're dealing with is Kathleen Jen and the RFP. Yeah. And, and we it, could ask and we can Kathleen to, to be the person to, to receive the information from these folks and to set up the meetings and be here. 
Yeah. Why can't we just have her do it? So I mean, that's what she did for the Salt Waste District. She was a manager of the Salt yeah. Waste District. So, and then she went out. She went out to bid on. You know, we were trying to get this facility built. We're still trying to get it built, but still, but there's a lot of stuff. Okay. So there. have we decided what the RFP is going to say? We're going to look for architect engineer services. People have experience in building and designing yeah. uh, energy efficient agrarian in, in the northeast in the yeah. northern in New England. Yeah. Okay. And an engineering company that has participated in and um, creating uh, the, the the mechanics and the, the structures and and siting a facility in a in a not so perfect place. Do, do we have well, to give not to say that? Do we have to well, give I'm just giving you just fine. a lame answer. Yeah. Are, are, there, are there experts that build stuff for VTran that's two hundred thousand square feet or something that we need that's whatever ten thousand square feet? Are, are there different levels of, of, of expertise of building town garages that we what? What, that we would want to ask for bids from? I think if for you the state? require it, having built ten garages, you're going to narrow your field down too much. Okay. Some some if we just put it out as John suggested, we'll see what happens, and we should get some good bids. Or we didn't get a lot of feet. We no. got maybe three proposals yeah. back. That's all you probably And we need. sent out a request for proposals so we could look at what their background was. And then there was one that was a combined one, and we asked for pricing, and they gave us pricing and everything, and we took them. Yeah. Andy, in your experience, are there firms who might be qualified to put in a standard metal building who we would not want to, uh, sorry, to be responsible for the design and build and engineering of a standard metal building who we would not want to hire to? Uh, put in an energy efficient building? Well, I think when you uh, have a design and then you go out for bid for it, you can do what's called qualified bid list. And um, that can be a two stage process mm -hmm. where you get, a you send a request for qualifications and then you review the qualifications and then you select the bidders from that list who have the proper qualifications to do the actual bid. Yeah. Right. So let me rephrase my question and see if I can be clear. I'm, I'm talking about the current process where we're writing an RFP for engineering and architecture um, firms to reply to. Uh, are there some folks who might reply to that who would be qualified to do a Butler building but not be qualified to do an energy efficient building? What I'm getting at is do we need to put something in about what we want uh, along those lines in the RFP itself? The, oh, well, the type of building that we would yes. prefer to have a wooden structure if possible. Yeah, for well, we can't really say that. I don't mean, care about the energy efficiency and the carbon emissions, and that energy. should all show up in the RFP. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm. Um, so, I, are are we narrowing in on putting that information in the RFP that we want to be able to consider that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess we're gonna have to look at it before we send it out. Yeah. 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 Okay. We would anyway. So, do we have clarity on what to say to Kathleen, Jen? Sure. <laughs> no, I mean, did you want? I can talk with Kathleen too. Along. Along. I can send you what her latest is. Um, again, she's trying to get to a mm -hmm. more detailed, kind of yeah. really more of what Andy's was talking about that you would want to do a, a more detailed like he, document. Um, but we can okay. we can back off and go as basic and generic as we want. Well, we can look at it. And they're going to do what you want them to do in the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The whoever we we pick will do what we want. You just want to look at their qualifications. We want to the, the support that we want to narrow it down to the type of person that we can work with. Right. To yeah. come up with an yeah, energy yeah. efficient design, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So. And you have some familiarity on what she did with Central Vermont Solid Waste, so you can also speak to her if you do want her to help receive the bids and provide feedback on those, that's yeah. clearly not something we had discussed as part of her scope. And we had, an ad, we had this, this, we still have it, uh, we had an ad hoc facilities committee, which essentially is not the committee that makes the final decision on everything, but they were yeah. a group of people, and we were fortunate enough to have a couple of engineers who were on the committee right. who gave feedback and had yeah. discussions with the architects and with the engineers right at the same, on the, at the same table. Yeah. <clears throat> we were able to, get across to them um, some specific things that saved us some money. Yeah. And also get across to them the point of what we wanted. Yeah. 
there's, there's going to be some give and take. You're going to have, once you right. decide who you're going to take, you have to sit down and talk with them about what you want at that point. They, they kind of have an idea, but they, they might throw some ideas out. They'll show up at the table with some ideas. You'll say, yeah, that's fine, but this, we want, we'd like this, this, and that, possibly. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be, and it'll be a group of people yeah. like you just outlined. Yeah. A small committee. Just, yeah. just like what Okay, hey. so let's do the RFP, but we just got to look at the language. Yeah. Okay. And if you have meetings, you'll just warm your meetings and warm them as a committee to the sure. support. Yeah. That's what we had to do. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, no, I get it. it. Yeah, I get it. So. Okay. We don't have to make it too complicated. No. Are we all, so we sat with the language tantively for the RFP. Well, I'm looking for an architect <clears throat> engineer. I will bring you all a draft mm -hmm. uh, okay. potentially the next meeting, but yeah. I'm on vacation um, okay. for a solid week between yeah. this one and that one, so I don't know how much I will be able to delve into this. Prior to that, well, can you meetings? just pass on a couple of names, like to John and myself, or whoever? Oh, like, no, no. If she wants to get in touch with us about oh, the language, yeah. if you're gone, okay, okay. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, because we can meet with Kathleen sure. as yeah. well, and yeah. and um, we'll look at her draft mm -hmm. and say, okay, what else do we need to have in there? And there are, some, like I said, the Department of Buildings um, oversees the construction of buildings all over the place. Most, and many of the buildings, the state government are. are Operated by the Department of Buildings, or actually owned by the Department of Buildings, um, and so they have RFPs. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. we right. can we can tag on to those too. Exactly. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. So let's just do that. So I'm just saying that yeah. if she is, if you're gone, and she needs to reach out to oh, yeah. reach to John, reach out to myself, yeah. and we can try to get this thing t together. Yeah. So. Yeah. She's I'm, really close. I think you're going to be impressed with what's already there. Oh yeah, um, I'm sure she's so, doing a good yeah. job. She does a really good job. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I'm familiar with Kathleen. She's great to work with. Yeah, yep. she does does a job. So, okay. and, oh, so we have some more bullets in your memo. That's it. We've covered everything. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Well, are you all set, Andy? Yeah, I'd be happy to do review of a RFP if that would be helpful. Sure. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you for your input. Give me part of the ad hoc committee. Yeah. Sounds okay. good. Thank you all. Yeah, thank, thank you, Andy. Andy. Yeah. Um, so the next item we have is. Members of the fire department here. I don't know. We 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 are ahead of schedule. So. Uh, are you? Sure oh, are you here for something? What are we here for? Well, they may have come for the fire department update. So Which we finished know. before it was scheduled to come yeah, up. Yeah, we were way ahead oh. of schedule, so I just okay. thought I'd mention that they're here. So. It's nice oh. to see you guys, though. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so is there a specific item that you want to weigh in on, or? No, I just wanted to listen. To, um, what you have to say about our meeting we had. We just said it was great and okay. everybody everybody's happy. Oh. That's all it was there. Constructive question for us. No. no. Okay. Okay. There were no questions and there was just an issue with coding, it's a little bit of coding on Yeah, just a few things that got yeah. moved okay. around and we yeah. and that's not a big they deal. Got so. resolved, yeah. So. Yeah. 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 I think uh, everybody's pretty pleased with what you guys are doing. Good. All right. Glad to hear. Just thought if there was additional questions. Thanks yeah, for coming over. We're trying to get the answer. Do you have any comments? What's that? Do you have any comments? <laughs> no, I think it's great that you said. That. How does <laughs> how does the select board representatives do at the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> well, well, new building you're talking about. Make sure that we get three bays. Three. You said two. <laughs> I think we'll discuss those uh, later. Oh. Hey, we'll <laughs> Why, are you guys getting a grader? <laughs> we'll determine what your needs no, are. No, there was a discussion in an about, organized way about Station 1 oh. and yeah. what the future plans were for that building. Yeah, bulldozers oh, yeah. were mentioned out of my mouth. Yes. <laughs> and we Which, then got into a, a discussion about that there's a possibility, depending on what we find with site yes something we may have to consider yeah. is the existing sites that we have in this area that's what i was saying and i think would that be beneficial for the fire department to have yeah, there's bays some, in a brand there's, new shiny there's building? issues with uh, buildings there yeah the fire station number one there's some issues yeah yes yeah so maybe we can resolve and, the and, whole if, it, thing. and if it goes down to the point where we can't find a really good area there we just tear down the old building and not not necessarily the fire department but the but the town right. garage is there and just go for it i know okay. well the discussion went to 
if they had bays in the new building, would that be more beneficial for them? Oh. Than mean, the existing building. Okay, so there weren't any questions when we came up to the items about the fire department. Yeah. Okay. Everything was very clear. Mm -hmm. That's fine. We just thought in case yeah. there was something yeah. we yeah. could help address it. Okay, so. Well, thanks, you guys. Appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate yeah. you showing up. Um, so the next item is discussion on engineering and estimated services for road projects. So as the board is aware, yeah. Doug Newton, the previous engineer, yeah. worked on all of your highway projects, is yeah. no longer with us. Yeah. And we have not had to really embark upon getting anything engineered until July 10th. Yeah. So um, we need to move forward with identifying an engineer that can work with us on future highway projects. So Chase and Chase has basically added to their practice and, and now has an engineer who actually did work with us on the county road culverts. Yeah. Ryan um, did the review of all of those and the oversight of that and did a great job with that. Yeah. So um, I received a letter from Chase and Chase and kind of outlines their hourly rates to hopefully move forward with Chase and Chase essentially as the successor engineer for yeah. town highway projects. Guthrie and I are actually meeting with Ryan in the morning to go to three locations, one of which is Sanders Circle, um, to uh, start discussions on what we may need at Sanders Circle. The three locations in particular, Sanders Circle, Sparrow Farm, and actually to go look at Guyette Road as well because Guyette last Wednesday had uh, water going across the road. So mm -hmm. we clearly have an undersized culvert there that we likely need to address in light Just of recent Wednesday. rain. Yeah, wow. in, light of, in light of recent rain, mm. that could become mm. our new normal. So um, Guthrie had mentioned potentially taking Ryan to Guyette as well, but definitely Sander Circle and Sparrow yep. Farm Road, um, both of those projects. Sander Circle, we will then likely hire and contract out that work. Sparrow Farm, the road crew will probably be able to do, but we still need to have engineer drawings on what we need to do. Mm -hmm. um, so really, I'm just asking the board for approval to kind of consider Chase and Chase the successor to Doug Newton. Mm -hmm. And we're satisfied with the work that they did last year? Yeah, very, so very much so. It seems like it's a good option. Now, we haven't really explored what the other options are. I don't even know what there are. I don't know what's available. There could be other options. Um, there would likely be a large learning curve to go in with any other option. Ideally, you get somebody that you work with on a regular basis, just like you did with Doug, because they get right. to know your town, they get to know your crew, they yeah, get yeah. to know everything. Right. Um, so it tends to be more efficient and honestly most more cost effective in the long run mm -hmm. when you have an established relationship with someone. So um, from a rate perspective, I mean, Chase and Chase is, it's standard rates. I mean, you know, for this type of work, I think if anything, they could end up, we could end up saving money with them simply because they do know our town so well compared to someone that does not. Ideally, you get a retired person who's a great expert in charges of pittance like Doug did, but that is one conversation that I did have with Ryan um, was that obviously we are well aware that we are now paying rates for someone that's actually, for people that are actually trying to, you know, make yeah. a living and yeah, yeah. sustain a lifestyle <laughs> and actual income then, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, We're so clearly it, it we will be incurring more engineering costs than we have in the past, yeah. but that's simply because yeah, there's no Doug. It's enough. someone's not doing it as their hobby now. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if the Doug is. I don't know if there's another Doug around. Doug. Yeah. I just, yeah. I'm not familiar with that. So. And I mean, Doug did work with Chase and Chase in the past as well. I don't know how many projects I've gone through. Yeah. And there's invoices from the two on the same project, so you know, I know that Doug's wife passed all of his old files to. Chase and Chase as well. Oh yeah. Um, right. So you know, it certainly it they kind of are ish. Yeah. <laughs> if Doug could have passed a torch, that's kind of he what has happened. Was, 
And it says in the letter that Ryan has experience in many engineering disciples, so maybe he can get some of his disciples to go out at a lower rate. <laughs> well, they're in here. They're in the uh, technicians, engineering technicians. Um, okay, so I guess that's going to work. So we will start essentially tomorrow morning with them. Yeah. Okay. 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 I've got a question. Yep. Can't trash Road. This this concerns Road. I don't know if it's the appropriate place, but I know you got a lot of stuff going on. But when are you going to fix the ditches on Hamilton Road? So I'll, I'll answer the question. What they've done is they prioritized areas in town where the roads are washed out completely. <clears throat> yeah. People can't drive. Yeah. So every road has washouts on it, like Hammer Hill. I drive all the back roads in East yeah. Montpelier, and they're all bad. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a priority thing. It's like get the get the uh, roads passable, Horn of the Moon, this, that, and everything else. The other thing that's going on, because it rains so much and so frequently, it's hard to do the repair work and get it so it's going to hold up when it's pouring rain at the same time. So that's why a lot of the repairs are sort of on hold right now. They'll get to it. Well, I'm just concerned because school's starting. Mm -hmm. And that road is a, as you know, back road into East Montpelier Elementary School. Mm -hmm. The traffic is going to increase yep. a lot shortly, and all the uh, farming people are <laughs> running up and down there with rigs, and we can't get. No, we'll put a stop to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I need vehicles, and my rigs are extremely wide, but I can get off the road. You know, it's like, <laughs> but. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not so worried about. Is. I'm not so worried about your guys. <laughs> it's the oh. farm beyond you. Oh yeah. Well, they me. take they take up the whole road. Yeah. They don't slow down and they don't pull. Over. Yeah, I know. And their stuff's bigger than yours, which is yeah. substantial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I get it. My two cents worth. That's all. <laughs> all right. But then you've got the ski. Then you've got the ski poles stuck at the top of the hill over there, and you can't pull over. That's true. And you're in the middle of the road. That's true. If somebody comes over the brow of the hill and you've got ski poles there and you're in the middle of the road and you've got a car full of kids headed right for you. Yeah. It happens. It's yeah. like, where am I going to go here? Yeah. Yeah. Over the ski poles? So I put one of them through the tire? I mean, really? It's yeah. like, oh. I know. Okay. But I don't really want to talk about that. But well, anyway, we have, we have I just want to well, bring, bring that up. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Tom, Tom had his hand up. I, I saw that. Okay. But Ken was talking. So, yes. Um, I just, before you go off the topic, I just wanted to mention that that Sandra Circle location um, is a bit of a hazard, mm -hmm. and I've stuck a couple pieces of wood up with signs up that say road right out, but it might be good to get something more official in place that keeps people from running full steam down that hill. I'm not sure if he's actually ordered them, but Guthrie had gotten pricing on Jersey barriers um, to actually put Jersey barriers up at each end to tell people the road is closed. Does stuff, stuff stay there, stay in the road? I know he was complaining a little bit about his cones disappearing. Oh, people were taking stuff all the time. I mean, when the rain was coming down on July 10th, that Monday, <laughs> they had roads they were that were flooded. The guys were trying to work because they were trying to clear culverts and keep things right. functioning, as water flowing as best as they could. People were just ripping the things out of the way and just Going continuing out. on. <laughs> oh, yeah. that I saw it with him when mm. I was out on Tuesday morning. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, so well, they, they won't take with, Jersey barriers out of the way. <laughs> yeah, Jersey barriers so, barrier is going to be a little bit harder to do that with, which is why that's the. If he needs some, I have some at the farm. Some Jersey barriers that were given to me. I have a bunch of them. But if he needs oh. to bring them over, oh, okay. you can mention well, he, them. Yeah. Yeah. So is there is there no is there's no signage there? There's stakes. Other than the two I've put up, there's no signage. There's stakes and a... There's stakes and some orange line, but they're within about 10 feet of, or 15 feet maybe, of where the actual 10-foot drop is. And it's a pretty steep downhill, so you can only give somebody a couple hundred feet of advance notice that they're headed towards a disaster. You need some cones, probably, at least. Uh, well, a sign, too. A sign, yeah. too. Yeah. At the top like of the hill. I think that's what you're saying. It's the top of the hill, so people have notice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good to know. And if, um, if it's going to be more than three or four months, um, we probably put some thought towards plowing and how things are going to shift with the road not being the same. I've already reached out to the school to talk about school busing, but um, yeah. I think it's going to be quite a while, right? It will be. Mm -hmm. Well, one, going into winter, so. I know, right. Of course, it's. 
Yeah, we don't we don't yet even have anything on that one size Culver. Mm. Right, we're currently working with Jaron Borg, who is our stream alteration engineer. So it's not going to be done this week. You might have to have a hydro yeah, hydraulic done. study yeah. too. No way. Yeah. yeah. It, it may be time to impress the people who live on the road to get them out there with their shovels the way we used to do in the old days. Oh. Well, I think some, I don't think it will stay there, though. I think we need some better <laughs> signs. And if we had Jersey Barriers here, then that's a yeah. good idea because yeah. then you can't go down into the. Signs were uh, an issue for every small town when yeah. this happened because right. no one is sitting on signage to have. Yeah. That was a text. The last text I think I got from Guthrie the Monday night the rain was coming down was one problem I know I'm going to have is I do not have enough. Yeah. Anything to mark. <laughs> well, that, that was an immediate aftermath now that we're down to a few areas. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have all the signs from County Road last year still, right? We, I have to but, reach to go. And we can put the Jersey barrier up the top of the hill, maybe, yeah. so people don't even go down there. So, so we, we, we just, there's no drive. Well, can we come within, up within yeah. homes, you have to, that's part yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, 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 right, right, yeah. right, right, right. So, right. can we come up with an idea when we might have signs over there? I don't know. We have to talk to Guthrie about yeah, the signs. Yeah, talk to Guthrie. Yeah. See what he's got available. Okay. We'll do that. We'll reach out. Okay, so um, the next item Thanks. is review. Uh, I think we're done with the services for road projects. Do, do we need um? Do we need a motion to employ Chase? Chase, Chase in this way? I don't know if you ever had a motion to hire Doug in the past. Yeah, we know. might have for the county road. I think we did actually. We could. Go ahead, Carl. Your <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me just think about this. Are we doing, we're not hiring Chase and Chase for a specific project at this point. We're having them look not, at projects. We're just saying right. they can yeah, it's work a, on projects. But there will be a fee involved. And they'll send us a contract. Is, yeah. there, is, there, okay. a spot, is there a spot in the budget? Do we have a line item in the budget? Well, for all of these costs will be going to the FEMA line item. Yeah. That's not in the budget. Yeah, it's a FEMA. Okay. Okay. So maybe, maybe the next step is for you to convey to them that we've said yes and for them to send us a contract and then we can vote to approve it. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. okay, so the next item is review of CV Fiber Audit Annual Report. Is that, you're here for that? And, and also to ask it, answer any questions, and we, yeah. had, we exchanged voicemails, and uh, I didn't complete the loop to get back to you, so would love to hear from you about a uh, question that I put to you, uh, which was, um, we as a town have donated $100,000 to um, CV Fiber to, amongst other things, help pay connection fees for people, and we're wondering just how that's being applied in the light of uh, what we've heard about connection fees just informally through a, a townsperson. Yeah, uh, I have been following up on that periodically over the, the last few months um, and kind of been told, you know, there's a process for going through it. We got other things to worry about. Um, when I finally got down to, okay, well, now I need an answer. Um, it was kind of a, oh, well, how it works <laughs> is that the money is being used in a way that allows them to roll out service to more people in our town faster is essentially how it works. Yeah. Um, that it's $1,500 per place per site that needs to get attached to the fiber. Um, the cost to the customer is typically only $99 um, depending on the situation. And so that extra $1,401 is picked up by CV fiber and um, the speed at which we can make our way through the town is kind of some calculus along looking at how many $1,401 drops do we need to make and where else are we building and what other backbone needs to get built somewhere else and so forth. And so the answer I was given was uh, this will, the money has allowed them to build faster in East Montpelier than they would have otherwise, not the build of the actual backbone, but the ability to put in drops to houses uh, is faster here than it would be otherwise. Um, so Whether that's a satisfying answer or not, I don't know. And I'd welcome questions to go to Jerry. Um, but that is the the uh, answer I was given by the board. Could you explain what, what a drop is? A drop is going from wherever the last point of fiber connection is to the actual residence or building if it's a, a business. Okay. So I had seen through this townsperson just... Uh, he, he was expecting much higher costs than, than that. So are, are, am I hearing from you that the, the charge for everyone will be $99 or will that be for a certain distance? The basic charge is $99 and everyone would be looking at that. Um, if it's more than 400 feet from that nearest internet 
connection point. We're at this point saying the nearest utility service point. So it would probably be a utility pole out of the road for most people. If it's yeah. more than 400 feet from there to the house, then there is a additional cost of a dollar per foot beyond that 400 feet. So a know. 600 foot away would pay $200 in addition to the $99. That, yeah. that includes if it's underground? Mm -hmm. Underground um, is it's the same for distance, but uh, if you need to buy, um, we, we will not be paying for the, the conduit or the digging, um, but we do have preparing for, for you know where supply chains are at right now and thinking about the world, we've prepared by getting a bunch of conduit ready to be sold if people need it. Um, and we've got a bunch of contractors lined up people can address, uh, talk to about what it's gonna cost to put in conduit if they need to. Um, it's like three dollars a foot. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that that sounds like it's consistent with the discussion that we had at the time we allocated the ARPA money of wanting yeah, to, the way I remember. to subsidize it, but not wanting to subsidize you know my long runs. So basically, the homeowner does pay for the conduit and the digging if it's underground. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Talking underground. <laughs> Um, there is one carve out that was in the MOU for, I think, a few specific buildings in town, municipal buildings, and it's like the school, town offices, um, that those would be covered, I think, in full by the, the ARPA money. Municipal buildings and yeah. non and, then, and we did not specify what those buildings are. It, um, do we need to specify those at, at this point? Uh, not, probably not until you're ready to get internet service brought to one of those locations. But yeah. it might be good to. I can go through the MOU and look at if there's any particular ones, but um, it would probably be good to have that list ready so that no one drops the ball on it. Very long list. We, we've been thinking of what, the school, the um, senior center, this building, was there any place else? We weren't thinking of town garage for that, were we? We've- Oh, there must be a power line right by there, so yeah. that's not a big deal. And then how about the fire station? Probably the fire station, yeah. yeah. That's it. I think so. Not a, not a long list. Right. Any other questions? No. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Well, and we'll get those signs up. <laughs> <laughs> and don't hold your breath about that being fixed, because I don't think it's going to happen this year. No. Nope. That was my expectation. They haven't even done the engineering thing, so that's red tape. Red tape. Isn't like you're going to take a backhoe They're going to figure out how, how big to make the culvert. Yeah, yeah. that takes. You gotta have the study, the hydraulic study, and right. blah, 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 blah. You gotta get a and crane in there and yeah, big trucks, yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, uh, before you go, you still there? Yeah. Um, the audit was uh, the nominal uh, thing on the agenda. Do you have any comments on the financial state of CV Fiber at this point? I think we're in a pretty good state. Um, I think our main takeaway um, was needing to do a little bit more getting our, our book order in the right state where we're using the right um, government standards by how we do our budgeting and, and all of that. It's not that we, our budgeting was wrong, but just needing to call out line items by the right codes and so forth so they all line up at the end. But um, uh, yeah, I didn't see anything that was at all a concern considering we're in our first year, don't have our first customer yet, so. so right, yeah. right. Just okay. need to get a good accountant on board. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Welcome. Okay. Uh, so the next item is consideration of quotes to replace town office oil tank. We have one from Gillespie and one from Packard's. Gillespie's is less money. Um, and that and that's the one that has the it has um has what? It has new legs. Packard didn't say they have new legs. They're gonna use the old legs? I don't know. They might. Okay. I doubt it. I like well the on there. <laughs> she <laughs> they screw in. Yeah, they made she, a pipe. Cheaper and new legs is what I observed. <laughs> yeah, no we hey. nothing. Might go to this is with new legs. legs. <laughs> Fifteen rounds. But I, I can't wanted, imagine that you the old legs. I'm sure that I was adding something to the cost. Somebody <laughs> might get the cost down. I have a I have a, I have a few questions about this. Okay, good. Hey, um, they didn't mention any war anything about a warranty for the tank, how long, or the life expectancy of the tank. A, a tank, a single wall tank usually goes 10 to 15 years. Mm. It might go 20 years if you have a really good basement and you, and you treat. Every year when they come in, they treat the, the, what's the, the oil that's remaining in the tank to, to absorb the waters, because the water is what causes, it rusts from the inside. Mm. And the oil floats on top. It on the outside right now. It might be inside too. Trust me. Oh, okay. So what happens is uh, the oil sits on top of the water, and the water uh, yeah. works on the tank at the bottom. So that's why they tend to start leaking at the bottom like that. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. 
Because the water is heavy. And it's going to sails right. down the bottom. Right. We could drain the water out. They right. they, they they just they just treat it generally. They just treat it. They, they have a treatment in there that probably absorbs the water. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what we do with diesel fuel. So, yeah, same, same thing. thing. We treat it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, treat it. Okay. Um, I, and that, they didn't mention single wall or double wall, so I'd assume they're going to go with a single wall. And the single wall has okay. the has the, has the uh, 10 to 15 year life expectancy, maybe 20 at the most. The double wall tank, if you get one with a P PVC outside, can last for 50 years. Uh, how long do you plan on having heat in the building? Or, or, oil, or, or, oil, or oil heat. Or oil heat. Oil heat. I'm just, because essentially the difference in price might not be that much. I, I looked at the price for single wall tank, like from Home Depot, and it was, it was around $900. And then I looked at the price for a double wall tank, and the double wall tank was anywhere from $1,200 to $1,600. For, for this size? Yes, 275 gallons. And the thing about it is a double wall tank if you have an overflow in the tank for some one reason or another, it captures it because it's an interstitial space in between the two right. walls. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's a little reservoir there. And theoretically, what they're supposed to do is when they come in and they fill the tank, at least periodically, they stick, they dip the tank to see if there's anything in the interstitial space. So if you have a leak, it occurs in that inner part of the tank first because they rush from the inside most of the time. Um, and this will contain that oil so you don't have a spill. Because a spill is going to cost you more than it would to ever put a new tank in. So what's the idea with a double wall tank? Is it that the inner wall will rust out and then you'll still have one more wall? No, 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 That's no. That, the minute that occurs and they dip the tank and they find all product okay. in that interstitial space between the two walls, mm -hmm. that tank's got to go. Okay. No, but it does, it's true, it contains it's, 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 You can it's, let it go until it rusts out. It's a containment yeah. tank, right. and it just contains it. The double wall. And, 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 the, tanks, and the tanks actually, there's all different designs, but um, in Harvey we installed a bunch of new tanks in the, last few, in the last few years I was there. And we got the rectangular tanks and they drew out from the top and everything and it's just a lot more efficient and they last these, longer. So it wasn't the oval tank with the legs on like we have down there right now? We took them all out. We didn't take them all out, but we took out the ones that were old. We had, actually had one that was starting to leak, so we went in and checked out a bunch of them, put the new furnaces in a bunch of places and put all new tanks in. Does this seem like a fair quote? Yeah, but he's um, telling it's a single wall tank. You don't know if it's a double wall, wall or single wall. You don't know. It's probably single. That's what I'm saying. So, so because it's a cheaper one, I bet you. So if they're and it, so they're essentially charging like sixteen hundred bucks to do the work. Right. Well, why do they make them out of steel, which rusts, rather than I don't know polyethylene? Or something? Like that. That's like. Well, I think the polyethylene probably won't hold up over time, though. I know that the fuel tank on my on my John Deere tractor is is. Uh, PVC. But the thing is, um, I think the outside on some of those tanks are made out of the PVC, but the inside is usually always metal. Okay. Probably less reactions with the metal and it'll last longer, but I don't know. So it's, you're saying we better look into whether what this tank Well, do you is. want to, do you want a double wall? Do you care? If you don't care, if you're only going to let, if this place is only going to be heated with oil for the next 15 years, great, just go over that tank. Yeah. So but we I just were told last year the tank needed to be replaced. When Packard came to do the annual service, they could not because they told me the tank was pitted. I brought a quote at the time. The request was to get two more quotes. Frankly, okay. fell off my list. A don't year later, it. here we are. Right. So. Does this seem realistic or are we getting closed? No, no, well, I, I checked online and the, the, the credit union, state credit union, the Vermont State Employees Credit Union, said the average cost for changing out a tank was between um, twelve and $1,600 to change oh. out the tank. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, you know, looking at the numbers out there, I would, I would say this is a little pricey. Yeah. They're a little pricey. I think Gillespie's got the better price, but they're not local, and, and the other person that that bid is a local. Conti Oil did not return a phone call, which is what happened last year. I reached out to mm. them at the board's request to get a quote. They never called me back, which is why it fell off my radar. We could go with Packard. So, then. I mean, it's up to you guys what we do or we can punt this another year. We don't really use the oil, but I, I, the tank doesn't look good. No, it's, it's, it's not. You know, it's, it's just on the outside. It's My not just on the outside, it rusts from the inside. And there's been moisture on the outside of the tank because the basement's been repeatedly yeah. So you got worse the situation there than most people So, do. you know. Well, an oil spill would really ruin our day. So I would say that if you were going to keep that, you should put at least put a, uh, another tank underneath it. 
Yeah. Yeah. If you had to. Yeah. That's and it should idea. theoretically well, should hold at least a third it. of the tank. But well, we can going. replace the tank. Yes. Not big right. Part. No. Yeah. So well, how hard would it be to get quotes on double wall tanks and also information about warranties with them? Honestly, if someone would like to help volunteer, that'd be great. <laughs> well, my so question is, my question is, do you really care? That's my. It's, that yeah, like, I mean, it, it's you know, so like I this, said, this I, when I attempted last year, didn't get return calls, so it's just it's. This building this is, may not be here. I say just go with Gillespie to do it. Go with Gillespie. I, I like Gillespie personally. Not Packard never returns my phone calls. I'm annoyed at them, but other people use them, so I should not oh, let my personal we'll preference it. do it. So we'll uh, Gillespie, I think, will do a good job, and it's less money. We'll save four hundred dollars. Right. I was just going to suggest too, if you, somebody was really wound up to, to hire Packard, just say, "Look, Packard, you match their price," and I bet he would do it. Yeah. Right. Any local. I say just get Gillespie. Okay. Good. Whatever. I don't have a problem with that. I yeah. mean, I just brought this up. Yeah. This no, I, I, I like the information that you presented because it's education. Yeah. It's education. I like that. So thank you. I mean, no, I do. I'll uh, happen to call and see if it's double or not. But oh, you could if you want to. But if, if they say no, what's the difference? But the thing is, we're looking at short lifespan. We're, we're not going to be. This building may not be here in fifteen years. I know. We may have a new building. Well, they won't get rid of this building. It's going to still exist. You're not going to tear yes, it down. That's right. No, it's going to be the society. society or something, something like that. Or it might be a private residence. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, but then you might not be heating with oil, though. Like, I, yeah, I switched I to heating with gas. The, yeah, three the years tank ago. is full. It's been full for the last year. Yeah, right? they'll have to pump it out. Oil is not what we use. It's emergency, though. I mean, because yeah. as we all know, that doesn't work when we get below 15. Yeah, so yeah it gets too cold. So the boiler kicks on okay. when we so, get below 15. So, so it, to me, it's really important that we change the tank. I don't care if it's single wall or no. Yeah, we will. I think we just call Gillespie and have him do it. But. That's my opinion. Okay. Do you want to make a motion? Or? I make the motion to go with the Gillespie. <laughs> okay. To accept the bid from Gillespie. Accept uh, the, for the oil, replacing the, the town oil tank. Town, yeah. The oil the tank in the municipal building. Are they putting on new legs? It says it in their post. Yeah, good. And I'm, 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 I'm in favor of that. They're they're new legs. New legs. legs. No, no, legs. No, 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 Patrick will probably not put new legs. legs. It says it's <laughs> new legs. <laughs> right. I didn't say how many. We need a though. second for that motion. How many new I'll legs? I'll second though? that. Oh, we have a second. Very good. Now we need to have discussion. Yeah, how many legs? Do we need? <laughs> it's usually four. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you, um, okay, further discussion about the oil no. tank? Nine. No? Nine. Oh, okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, oh my God. Now. Thank you. Let's get past my bedtime, too. Well, you're the one that made it. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate that information. Um, curb cut application. What do we have? Curb cut. Um, oh, for Christopher as Carl, as he's put in a new curb cut. Carl, this picture looks like... Um, when they do like bombings in Iraq and oh, Afghanistan. The original looks better. It just looks yeah. Like it looks like a. Uh... Okay. Got cool. you looked at it, I'm sure. I move yeah. to approve permit, curb cut permit number 23, or access permit number 23 031. A second. Is, this, is, the is there any discussion about the curb cut? No. Nope. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Warrants. Warrants. Oh, they're right here. This is errors and emissions. Curb oh. cut. Oh, I guess I better pass this one out. There's a curb cut. We're supposed to sign an errors and emissions thing, right? Yeah, we haven't gotten to the addition. Yeah, we Where is it? Yeah. It's an addition to the agenda. I'll just leave that to the moment. The warrants are right here. Okay. Mm
Anything more on the uh, town administrative report before we go to other business? Or do we do have other business? Uh, Rosie asked that I remind you all that there's a tax appeal hearing on Wednesday night. Yep. Uh, the state debris removal contractors were going to be collecting debris today from eight addresses in town, but uh, they, um, sorry, I'm May August 21st, um, but they, uh, had an issue with the truck and called me this morning that they were going to have to push it out of day. Uh, Sullivan and Powers completed their own site review. There are some outstanding items that I'm trying to get resolved uh, as quickly as possible with them. Uh, two zoning permits applications were received since the last meeting. I will be on vacation next week. Good for you. Enjoy. Uh, and will not be checking emails. Good for you. So. Uh, the office will be closed on Thursday from 2 to 3, primarily for me to prep the staff for Gina to attempt to not be available. Um, and then I have the remaining schedule, so I just wanted to point out uh, November 20th, that meeting, Thanksgiving is that week, the 23rd, I don't know. I just wanted to mention if anyone had any travel schedules that that date would be an issue. We don't have to solve it tonight, but just to point out that that is the regular date. Right. If you want to move that, we can certainly do that. Okay. Maybe to Friday that week. That's a great idea. I'll be in Minnesota. All right. So. <laughs> but you're still, you're still connected. Right. And I'll need a break. Yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be the other meeting last Thursday. I want to appeal here because it has oh, some implications yeah. for us. So we have a few things to do under other I business. Know. So we want to do the review of errors and missions, probably. Get that out of the way. So there's a parcel. We got more land in town? Increasing the acreage by six into six point four six acres. Could it get surveyed? Well, is it? Do we have to sign that? We, is it by? We take over somebody else's. The other page is obviously. The we we take it over somebody else's town. <laughs> is this a military operation? Or is this, oh, this bloodless? Can someone Morse's, explain what happened? Morse's field, it must be. This is all they oh, handed me late Thursday. Yeah. Okay. But that's, that's where they own land. Is there Russians more. involved? Did they take right us? Yeah. I, it's probably I, that big field. I really don't yeah. like to sign yeah. something without any explanation of why I'm signing it. Is there, is, there, is, there, is, there, is there a big reason to do it today? I don't know. Okay. How about, how about we ask him to explain? The where? Look at it next meeting. Oh, me. Oh, we signed it in the back. You signed it in the wrong place? I didn't sign anything. Huh? I didn't sign oh, anything. No. Hold your jersey on there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you always speak in cow talk, aren't you? <laughs> I deal with cows all day, so it's no different here. <laughs> you hold your whole seat. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, right here is where you're supposed to sign. But, uh, I don't know. No, I'm not signing it. Corrected error in total acreage at 6.46 acres. I don't know. I know the land is. I want to hear what we're doing, mm -hmm. what, what I'm yeah, signing off on. Who's, more acreage. I was in the midst of dealing with the external audit. Okay. Well, we don't have to sign anything. Yes. Is that the only errors in emissions? Interesting. Is that all that we have? Have you guys ever heard this before? Is this errors and emissions? Yeah. That no, all of them getting extra land in the town. Well, well somebody surveys. If it says yeah. plus or minus, then sometimes right. it changes yeah. because it's, it's a lot of six acres. Yeah. Good for them. Yeah. Maybe it was surveyed in the 1700s. Have I ever heard of that? Yeah, I probably have. Okay. But there's definitely some wild discrepancies on our. Yes. Property. Really? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's just that one parcel. That's the only. Okay. You want to skip the personal matter and go to the ash tree? Sure. Yeah. So the ash tree management project, I had mentioned this to you all previously about uh, potentially using ARPA funds to fund that project for fiscal year 23. Um, I discussed it with the external auditor when he was here and he agreed with my line of thinking in that, especially now that we have had a, an event that is going to have FEMA funds, um, it's something we just need to keep our eye on how much we, there are additional audit implications depending on how much federal funds you use in any given year. So the combination of ARPA and whatever FEMA funds that we, or costs that we incur that are FEMA eligible could trip us into a single audit situation. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much Sanders Circle, Fair Farm, blah, blah, blah are going to cost. We all know we are also sitting on ARPA funds that need to be expended over the next few years. So it would be great if we could go back into fiscal 23. Number one, ash tree projects are absolutely ARPA eligible. Um, probably something we should look at. As, especially as the board looks at projects. As you know, the last two years, we've nearly doubled the budget for these projects. Um, so it would be a good use of funds to consider the $31,934 that were paid to Matt Foster for that work in fiscal 23 could be considered ARPA funds. And if we would like to do that, then I need to work with the external auditors. We'll post a journal entry to reallocate those costs. To 23. To, it would be essentially a credit back into the general yeah. fund and move those costs into the ARPA bucket. Okay. It would yeah. help us as well. The trigger for a single audit is based on your fiscal year spending. So if we spent, it's really more than a million, but I don't know what some of these repair costs are going to be. We don't yet have, I mean, it, there's, no way for us to even, we all know what county road culverts cost. So um, it's just something to be mindful of. So that if we I, spend over a certain amount of money with the FEMA, that triggers a With lot. federal funds. It triggers. Oh, federal funds. With federal funds. But, but it's a single program audit. Yeah. So it would audit like highway, whoever spent the most money. Yeah. Whatever department spent the most money, they just audit that. It's pretty oh, simple compared to the comprehensive audit you just had. Right. Yeah. But it's like 12 grand, yeah, maybe up to as high as 15. Yeah, it's well, cost and it's time that. and it's. Well, they charge what, over 20 now, right, for the for the regular audit? So I would say it'd be around between 12 and 15,000. This is something everything everyone tries to avoid as much as they possibly can. Because it's a waste, kind of a waste of your money, just blowing that money away. Because you're not going to be scoot, it's not scoot, you're not. Your, your books are fine, you know that, and it's only one department, but the thing is, um, they have to do it, they have to just justify to some, to the feds and whoever. It changes your procurement requirements. It, yeah. yeah it, are um, they doing anything more in that audit than we do in our annual audit? No, less. Less, yeah, they're doing less. Required. And, and there are additional implications. You have to adjust your procur procurement protocols. It, it greatly complicates wow. what you're doing. When I attended the applicant briefing at the state, the question was, does anyone here have more than a million that they're going to be spending? No one raised their hands. And the response was good. If you, if you don't, it's, you so know. So we probably it's won't deal. spend it. It's not a big deal. No, so you we just probably said, won't. But yeah. it, once you add ARPA into the mix, yeah. it's, it just it's total federal funds. Answer, so, so they right. buy it over the years. Yeah. Well, we can do that. I Plus, mean, it's to our benefit to go ahead and get as much of this ARPA yeah, funds yeah. used yeah. as possible because yeah, we still, don't have a clear right. path forward. Yeah, yeah. And again, December 31st, 2024 is not as far away as everyone right. thinks. So, so, so that mo you made a really good motion there, but it was a long time ago. <laughs> and you're tired. I can't make motions. Yeah. Right. No, I know. I'm just kidding. But you explained it very well. So. Right. So the idea is that the, we have a pot of money, ARPA, an account with ARPA, our remaining ARPA funds in it. Yeah. That would be drawn down by this amount, the 16934 I would propose the 31934 31, yeah. I would do all of it. Which okay. is okay because that right. shifts that now we have more money left in the general fund. It also right. helps yeah. with the general fund because we yeah. obviously have some areas of the general fund that were over for fiscal 24. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Okay. I think so, we're in agreement here. I think so. Very good. That's a good assessment. So John moves to. <laughs> <laughs> John doesn't have a problem with it, but you know what? I have to read it, read it wherever it is. It's, it's not in here, is it? Uh, I'll, I'll move to allocate the um, thirty-one thousand nine hundred thirty-four dollars from the ARPA funds to the FY twenty twenty-three Ash Tree Management Project. I'll second. I think John wanted to second. <laughs> I'm all right with it. <laughs> so uh, is Zoe second? Yeah. 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 Okay. Is there further discussion? So <laughs> this this money would be it's retroactively. We already spent it. That's but right. we're refunding That's the general right. account mm -hmm. for that amount of money. For that, that yeah, for last that, fiscal year. For last fiscal year. Was that clear for the motion? Um, I, I, wasn't, think, I think you're good. I wasn't yeah, sure. Yeah, we can you. adjust the motion a little bit to make that clear. Absolutely. Well. Yeah. But, but do we need to ask Deidre to adjust the motion? Would you like me to read it back? Please. Uh, motion to allocate the 31000 amount from the ARPA fund to the FY23 ash tree management. I think that covers it. I think that's perfect. You're close yeah. enough. You know okay. You know uh, is there further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. And okay. you're going to work with the auditors to make sure that it's all done? That happens. Yeah, this is something I told him I was going to yeah. bring to you tonight, and then I would yeah. circle back with him. Good. <gasps> awesome. Okay, so that took care of those two additions. Nice. Um, we have a county road. Did, did you say something about county road, right? For addition? Well, I was curious what. I could or could not do about the speeding problems that oh, oh, yeah. continue to be reported by residents, people that yeah. to in person, people that are posting. Yeah. And it definitely seems Can I ask the sheriff to spend some time up there? That's the best way to do it. Or yep. I did, right? Okay. I already asked about Center Road and County Road. Well, I think the hard reality is, and I've talked to, I'm not going to say who, but a rather prominent person involved in municipal stuff who commented to me that that road should be 50. That's part, part of the reason it's a problem. So, I mean, while they can spend time on the road, it's 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 a problem. I mean, Is people- just, Should we lower the speed limit? I mean- Lowering only works if you can enforce it. Right. And you can't arbitrarily lower it without doing a highway study. You can do it, and if it stands without a court challenge for three years, then it becomes the law of the road. But if you do it without a traffic study, a, a speed assessment, then, um, then you might be creating a traffic uh, trap for people. It's not appropriate. Is it expensive to do a traffic study? Well, I don't know. Doug Newton did, after, did, did the last one for us, and it was like fifteen hundred bucks. But right. it's probably different now. And probably Chase and Chase can do that because now they have their engineer. But the point is, I'm just I'm thinking that um, that I don't think it makes real sense yeah. to lower the speed limit. I think it, to probably fat, if you're driving. Is it 50 there? It's 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. Yeah. So they're already speeding. So they're already speeding. Yeah, yeah, they are. If you're and going 55 or 60. People are reporting 70 miles an hour. On the, the man I spoke to at the county yeah. celebrations with them said that he listed like five times that he's either seen people run off the road or he and his wife have been run off the road. He's replaced his mailbox about 10 times. Right. Running off the road while he was pedestrian or driving? When he was or? driving, like a lot of people aren't, are speeding so badly that they're ignoring signals. So if someone is like turning left into their driveway, some people have tried to pass around them. Oh man. When, and nearly missed fatal collisions. He's seen people drive off, um, you know, the turn to Templeton Road, if they're going towards Callis, mm -hmm. miss the turn to Templeton speeding and drive into the marsh. I mean, he, he, he told me, like, so many accidents, and then... It's self-correct. That's right. Just last week, someone else posted in Front Porch Forum, and it seems pretty dangerous. A lot of people. Really? And it, 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 it was a problem prior to the construction, and my running joke was the complaints about the construction would stop, and next this summer it was all going to be complaints about speeding on the nice smooth road. Yeah. So it's unfortunately not surprising, and I have been passed on that road a number of times because I'm going 40. And, and yeah. the sheriffs, the sheriffs allow usually Five. police officers no up to 10 miles an hour. That's what state police officers allow. So I'm sure the sheriffs do the same thing. Well, well, not I, necessarily, but... Well, I don't know. I had right. yeah. eight cops sure working for me, and I know what they allowed. They allowed 10 miles an hour like everybody else. Yeah, that was not happy. 
That's kind of standard. They can pick up people anywhere. That's kind of so, standard I'm national. Not, so my, national my eyes were opened to this dance between what people want to drive given the road conditions and the speed limit when we had the conversation on the state road down here at the bottom of Town Mill Road and, uh, about right. reducing the speed limit to 40, which we got them to do after they did a traffic study uh, a few right. years ago. And uh, the, I mean, it was this almost surreal thing where they would only reduce the speed if people were already driving the lower speed. Right. In the condition right. of well, the road. Do you understand why they do that? Please it's Because uh, every road condition, when people are driving down that road, that you have, for most people, you have this innate ability to sense the danger of the road and you yeah. drive at a particular speed. Yeah. Like I know like if I drive through some, you know, in, in Barry City on some, one of their side roads, I drive probably like 15 or 20 miles an hour. Well, so they track that and they want to see how many people are actually driving at that speed. And if most people are driving at that speed and there's some anomalies below and some anomalies above, then they'll pick that right. speed because then you're not creating a traffic trap. You're creating a speed limit that everybody already abides by. Now, if everybody's driving 50 on the road, then they're going to say, well, why not leave it at 50? Yeah. Um, right. If everybody's driving on the interstate 75 miles an hour, why not leave it at 75? I mean, that could right. theoretically happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the way to design that. That's why where they go 25 miles an hour into going into Barrie on like three different places, and one's on the Barrie Montpelier Road, suddenly it's 25 miles an hour. I'm like, this is a blankety blank speed trap. Because everybody wants to drive 40, because yeah. you right. naturally want to drive 40. Right. But well, it says 25. Areas. There are a lot of areas of like Route 14, for example, where it's 50, and then there are certain areas where you have to slow to 35. They're populated definitely. areas, and you slow down anyway. Right. It's highly curvy. It seems like it would make sense for at least a certain area of County Road where people are complaining the most, and it seems the most dangerous. And you might, but it's at 40 now. If they're driving right. 50, 40. they do a traffic yeah. study, they're going to keep it at 50. So, so what you're saying. Yeah, I was going to say, the traffic study could actually work against us. Yes, uh, yeah. Yeah. it could work against us. Yeah. It could make the speed limit higher because yeah. everyone's comfortable at 50. Right. It is interesting when you talk about road conditions. Disney, way back when, on one of their property, well, it was a widely traveled road, but it dead-ended into a pond. Mm -hmm. There was mm. a stop sign. There were lots of barricade things to warn you, but because of the number of people that kept driving into the pond, because you were on a nice, wide, beautiful road, mm -hmm. so you weren't going to go the forty mile per hour. So they put people curves in that it. That they, uh, well, Speed they off. full on had to redo the road <laughs> because, of course, yeah, it was Disney. They were sued. Um, so, but I forget how many people drove into the lake. Um, right. It was rather large, um, but that <laughs> drove into that body of water because it dead ended, and you had to go right. Well, primarily left because mm -hmm. nothing was built yet to the right then. Mm -hmm. But um, because the road condition, you were on yeah. what almost felt you like just, an interstate, you came off of an interstate, right, you, right. they basically said yeah. it was understandable that everybody was driving right, 55, right. 60 right. miles per hour through there and barreled into a okay. body of water. So well, we're looking at speed bumps or narrowing the road or, or you know, so, something else to not? Slow the cars down. Uh, you already took them all out. Light. Oh, darn. Great idea. <laughs> you paved it. Took out the speed bumps. I know. I love line up and I, see, uh, I support a rough road policy, which I said 10 years ago, and I was shot down for that. But that's okay. I, I think having the sheriffs up there regularly. Yes. Yeah, I think it's a good And if there's, some, if there's somebody driving, a lot of people driving 50 or 49. They're probably not going to stop them. It, they're going to, but you know what they're going to do is there's going to be a lot of other people still driving. There's going to be a, that group that's going to be driving faster. Yeah. I they just need to be there. And we should find out when the speeding is occurring, and what time of day, what day of week. That was actually one question Washington County had. I, my That's guess is question. on yeah. County Road, it's really all the time. I know on Center Road, that question was already asked again. I directed them to Center mm -hmm. and County. Um, okay. Center Road, that question already came up, and it was like it's all the time, you know, yeah. when it when it happens. So I think that's probably going to be the answer on County Road as well. When, when um, they came in, they talked about their evidence-based policing and uh, wanting to put a hose across the road to get measurements. Uh, could we oh. encourage them yes. to do yeah. that yeah. at yes. Road? Yes. Yeah. But they, they do that, the Sheriff's right. Department. Yeah. I think yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. So, so we, when we did our traffic study, there was a road call, Vermont Avenue. People were always complaining about speeding. There was a lot of retired people there too so that you know they hung around and looked out the windows like I do to see if people are speeding or not and uh, and and the thing was you know you know you know when it was occurring around like eight o'clock in the morning and around quarter of three in the afternoon you know why 
the, no the, the Hazen home. Union is right there, and the kids are on their way home. Oh, and yeah. they drive through there because it's a shortcut, and they go like hell. Yeah. So that's when the cops would sit up there. Yeah. So that's so. And that's when the parents would call and say, "We're trapping your kids." <laughs> well, if you put that thing across the road, does that tell you the time or the speed? Yes. What does that tell it like? tells yeah. you the speed and the time. Yeah. Right. Well, time. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And a day. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Okay. At um, least that's what Doug Newton's radius tells. So we've done all the other business except for the personnel matter. I and I had that oh, no. Oh, yeah. Meeting. You wanted to yeah. talk. Yeah, I just wanted to briefly. Scott, were you at that meeting as well? Yes. Yeah. So last Thursday, um, as we talked about at our previous meeting, um, Scott and I went out to the Montpelier meeting, and there's been a lot in the paper about it, uh, so we don't need to go through all the details, but uh, basically a lot of people were there, 550 people were there, uh, wow. 300 in person, 250 online, Wow! and yeah. a lot of um, a lot of radical talk about um, moving the high school up to VCFA, or moving the downtown up to VCFA, or jacking up everything in downtown by 15 feet, and so on and so forth. Wow! But uh, there was also some consideration of, uh, of thinking about uh, solutions more regionally and working with other towns in the area. And uh, I just wanted to, to throw that out there, just so we're aware that some people may be coming to us and uh, saying, you know, can we use East Montpelier for stuff that's been in Montpelier before? I have no idea what that. Well, East Montpelier, like. you know, since 1848 has been divorced from Montpelier. That's right. Now they want to re-wed. They do have something. some really good property up for the Elks Club West. They have like right. 23 acres up there, and they could put all kinds of stuff. Up there. They could. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the next meeting in the series, it's a series of three meetings initially. The next one is tomorrow night at the State House from 6.30 to 9. What they're going to do is they have uh, around a dozen or so topics that they've identified from the first meeting and online conversation on something called Padlet. Uh, they're going to have breakout meetings for each of these ideas and talk about how to move them forward. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so the only, only other thing left is a personnel matter, I believe. Am I staying corrected if there's something I missed? No? Okay, so... I make the usual motion to uh, go into executive session for the statutory, usual statutory reasons to discuss a personnel matter. Second. Okay. So we can... Tell Deidre we could, we could what we vote. do and what we, we vote. All in favor, go in. All, uh, <laughs> all in favor, please say aye. 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 Is, oh, aye. <laughs> and then Deirdre, yeah. Yeah. They get their own. Yeah. You ready? Yep. Okay, we are out of executive session. At 821, it looks like. 821, close enough. No action taken nope. of any we're going to discuss the next step. No action ever taken in executive session. Oh, we're muted. Oh, we're muted? Oh, we're muted? No, we're unmuted. No, oh. we're, I'm, always, I'm always muted because oh. if I unmute no, this, then we don't think we get muted. muted. Oh, you know, when, when okay, you came back, back, it must have muted itself. So we're out of executive really session. Oh, we're out of executive session. We are out. Oh. Yes. All right. And? We are authorizing the town administrator to advertise the minute taker position for the select board, the DRB, and the planning commission. By consensus. By consensus. Mm -hmm. And she will advertise in front porch or wherever, wherever she feels, she feels appropriate. Mm -hmm. Appropriate. Okay. I, want, I say fit, he says well, appropriate. Well, my language is not generally mediocre. I try to elevate it a little bit. <laughs> well, that, 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 is up for the, that is up for debate, but I don't think we want to debate right now. You can hear him yeah. saying too. Okay. Oh, I'd like to make a motion. You would? Did we adjourn? You've been talking meeting? a lot to me. I have a second that motion. And that's not debatable. <laughs> You're making the motion? Yeah. And you're second? Yes. All those in favor, please. Oh, is there any more discussion? You can't, dis you can't discuss this. Oh, you can't? There's no debate with it for no, no discussion about adjourning. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.